Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, we are into June and for this month in the Mixed Media Emporium that I co-host with Nina Raibina, we'll be doing something just slightly different. So, Nina and I have chosen a theme for this month which is small. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to set a specific prompt for each week of the month. And this week we are starting with tea bags. So it's projects relating to tea bags, tea bag art, etc. So for my project today, I am going to be using these square tea bags. Now these are just a, a normal standard size. And what I'm going to do, these, these ones actually have a kind of gusset area in them. So I'm going to cut into here to empty the tea out. Now, there are various different types of tea bags and, you know, you just have to work with whatever style it is that you've got. But I do hope you'll enjoy this. Now, I am keeping all the tea that I take out of, of the tea bags and I'm going to be using about 12 in total. In fact, I will use 12. You could use more than that if you wanted. Uh, you could get away with, with using less. So I'm just going to keep this bit on normal speed. I will do things a little bit quicker later on where, you know, I'm doing some kind of repetitive stuff. But I'm knocking all the tea to the bottom and I'm just pulling that gusset open just a little bit, putting my scissors in just as gently as I can and then I'm going to snip along. I'm being careful because I don't want to cut all the way through the tea bag. Though, you know, it could be repaired if, if it comes to it. So I'm then just going to open that up and I'll drop the tea out. Now, one of the things about it having that kind of little gusset area is that the tea will catch in it as I'm emptying it. However, there is another benefit to it and it is the way that I'm going to use the tea bags, the project that I'm going to do, it will actually just help strengthen those edges, having that little bit folded over. So you'll see I'm trying to shake out as much tea as possible. I won't get it all out. And you'll see later on in the project that there's bits and pieces left in. In fact, you can see some already that's in the kind of seams of the tea bag. And that's okay. I, I don't mind that. Now, I am using dry tea bags. Uh, you can obviously, if you've used your tea bags already, you can dry them out and then empty the leaves out when they're dry. When I do tea that way, in fact, I always empty my tea bags because the tea leaves go into the garden or into the garden compost. But I decided to do it this way this time simply because I wanted to use square bags. My normal tea bags are round. I wanted to use square ones and I didn't have any of these dried out. So I'm just taking them from dry and that's why I'm saving the tea in it. So again, just knocking that out, just taking my time to do that. But as I say, there will always be little tea leaves left here and there. So these are quite nice, they're quite strong tea bags. Now, if you didn't have that kind of little gusset area to cut into, you could just cut along any part there. Again, just being careful, just pushing into it and cutting along. And there's lots of different projects you can do with tea bags. I would have loved to have done a few, but time meant that I only managed to do the one. So just speeding it up a little bit now, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take six of the tea bags. So I've emptied out 12. I'm going to take six of them. And what I'm going to do is to put a layer of glue over them. So quite a generous amount of glue because I want this glue to go all the way through and stick both sides of the tea bag together. I've got it down on a piece of greaseproof paper. So anything that's got a slightly waxed surface would do for this. You just don't want your tea bag sticking. And it's a case of just keeping on picking them up and laying them down, making sure that they don't stick. 
want a little bit more glue on that. It's just where the thicker bits of the tea bags are, where the joins are. I want to make sure that they stick together here. So giving it a really good coat of glue. And what I will do is to take just my heat tool and I'm going to dry those because I want them dried as, as soon as possible because obviously if I lay them down on anything just now they might just stick to it. So there we go. I've got six that have been done that way. They're a bit stronger feeling now. Nice texture to them. You'll see the little tea leaves in them. And then I've got six that I haven't glued. And of course these all have an opening. So what I want to do now is start to distress them a bit. And this is the way I'm going to get the kind of used tea bag look. Now that uh, linen one, the linen ink is just about done. All I was trying to do was to put some down on my piece of paper there to wet it and then to let the tea bags absorb. I'm just going to put some directly on now. As I say, most of the ink is out of this, so I'm really kind of struggling to get it out. But once I've got that done, I'm then going to add a different colour of ink. I'm just going to use the vintage photo. You see that came, a lot more came out that time. Adding some water, and I'm just going to dip the tea bags in here and there, trying to get an uneven effect on it. And I'll do each of them in this way and then I'm going to thoroughly dry them. So, moving on to the next stage of the project. I've got my six bags, they're dry, and what I'm going to do is make sure that they're all opening fully. Sometimes I've just got to put the finger in just to Make sure that there's nothing sticking together. They've not had glue, but the paper can stick together. And I'm making sure that I've got all the openings in the same way. So that at the moment, they're all facing to the top. Now, there's two ways you can start to join these. I'm going to make a journal. So I can glue together two of the gusseted sides. And that will make my journal slightly taller than wider, or I can do it the other way and take those kind of crimped edges and put them together, which will make it a broader journal. So for this one, I've decided that I'm going to do it the crimped edge to crimped edge. Just double checking that I've got my openings to the top. Obviously, if I'd done it the other way, my openings would be to the side. And this time I'm just going to use this glue just because it's got a slightly smaller nozzle than the PVA that I was using earlier. Now I don't want to put too much on here. But I'm going to put a layer down there and I'm just going to smooth it out with my finger. Trying to keep it no further than the kind of crimped edge. Then I'm going to put the crimped edge of the other tea bag on top and just smooth them together, just trying to grab any excess glue there and just pushing that firmly down. And I'll lay that off to the side to give it a chance to, to stick. I'm going to take another two and I'm going to do exactly the same, just gluing two of the crimped sides together. So just one on top of the other, making sure it's as straight as can be. And then my final two. Now I've chosen just to do, to use six, but you could do way more than that. But this just makes a nice, nice size and it's, it's quite a good size for filming. So I've got them and what I'm now going to do is to glue the three sets of two together. So this time I'm taking one set of two and I'm going to put some glue right up the centre of that. So a very similar process. And 
and just sticking that second lot on top. Again, just trying to make certain that as far as possible it's, it's centred so that my book will open in a fairly even way. My pages will all be evenly put together. And then I'm going to attach the next set of two. Just smoothing the glue out again. It just means that if there's any excess, if there's too much, I can take it off at this stage rather than pushing that down and it all pushing out the way and, and sticking my actual pages together. And just gently pushing. And you'll see that when I close it, it gives quite a broad spine to the the book, but I'll show you how to change that just shortly if you want to change it. But I'm going to let these dry and meantime I am going to have a cup of tea. So why don't you relax with me while I have a cuppa? Let's take a moment. Let's slow down. Let's take a deep breath. And relax. Time to get back to work. Let's start again. One more sip. Oh, really, really good. Maybe a few more. Oh, lovely. start now. That tea was delicious. So of course none of the tea has gone to waste. So I am now going to do a little bit of stamping on my pages. I'm not going to stamp on every page. I'm only going to stamp on the page that I'm going to put more detail on. Now I was trying to see where the stamp came from. It seemed to be Royal Menagerie. I don't know what that is, who they are, but it's, it's quite a nice stamp anyway. I'm really just doing this for a little bit of background interest that will form the basis of my page. Now I'm not going to fill every page at this point because I do want this to be a journal that perhaps in future I will put some notes on. So as I say, I'm just going to stamp on the pages where I'm then going to put some more kind of focal points. And just using black stays on ink. 
not using an acrylic block because I'm not looking for a very hard pattern here. Just want just something, just a little bit of interest on the pages. And from the front of the book, I'm going to be working on the left hand pages, no, the right hand pages. And from the back, I'm going to be working on the left hand pages. Gosh, did I get that right? You'll see anyway which pages I'm doing as I go along. Okay, I will clear those out the way. Now I'm just going to it's not fully dry down that spine, but this is a good point to bend it. So if you don't want to have that kind of broad spine on it, just gently push it down. Now it will mean that the pages will kind of stick together in a little way. Uh, so it reduces the overall size of the page just ever so slightly. But it just means that the book sits slimmer than it would if you left the broad spine on it. So all I'm doing now is I'm just putting in this piece of paper, uh, just making sure that these are all opening again, but I'm going to start gluing. So I want that piece of greaseproof paper in there so that the glue doesn't go through the front right onto the, the back of the tea bag. And in fact, it could go through several tea bags. So I'm being careful. I've pulled out some pieces of, again, I think that was greaseproof paper that I had uh, mono printed on, gel printed on. I've pulled out that little piece of fabric, some old dictionary pages, map, etc., and some Tim Holtz botanicals. And all I'm going to do is to start to create little pages, little decorated pages. Now actually I think that would have looked quite nice just with that butterfly on the front but I do want to put a little bit more interest so a bit of the dictionary, a bit of the map and then I'm going to take a tiny bit from my gel printed pages as well. Just lots of little different bits and pieces just to create a bit of interest, just in the way you would do with uh, an art journal page, really. So I'm, I'm treating this a bit like an art journal. And of course, this is the thing that always takes the time, just looking, arranging, rearranging, until I get it in a kind of way that I think sits quite nicely. Now I'm going to go round each piece with my Vintage Photo Distress Ink. Now I do sometimes with these kind of Tim Holtz things cut a little bit the white edge off. There's sometimes just too much for my liking. And I take a little bit off, but I do decide in the end that it's probably easier just to leave as is rather than trying to be too precise about that. And of course the bit round uh, the butterfly's feelers is always the most difficult to try and cut. I keep going with this one until I, I uh, get that little bit off and then I'm just going to go round it, ink round, just to take that white edge of it as much as possible and then I'll also ink round my other little pieces. It just helps them stand out a little bit when they're down on the page. Not looking to make it too thick though. double checking my arrangement and what I'm going to do now is for my little pieces I'm just going to use a glue stick to put these together and then to also glue these down onto the tea bag. But I will use my heavier glue for the actual butterfly just because it's thicker 
and I'm not sure whether the glue stick will hold it. So just double checking my positioning, put more of the glue stick on there. And just pushing that down and into place, moving my piece of paper on the inside. If I didn't move that, then there's every possibility that the glue would go right through and stick to that as well. So I, I'm, as well as that acting as a protector, I need to make sure that it doesn't stick to that. So a few little dots of glue. I think actual glue dots might be something that would, would work quite well. For something like this so long as they kind of dry out on the back otherwise again there is a possibility because the tea bags are so thin there is a possibility it would go right through so I suddenly think if I want to put that down the edge I'm just going to pull up the butterfly's wing so that when it comes to putting that down the spine I'm not going to cover the butterfly's wing Looking now at a flower, I'll just do this one and then I'll do the rest off camera. I start to cut round this. But I don't get very far and then I think, no, I'm just going to leave it. It's going to take way too long. But again, just taking a few little bits and pieces. They don't need to be terribly big because obviously the tea bag's not very big. And just looking at how these might fit. That with just a piece of blue might have been enough. But I just decide that I'm going to use the same three kind of pieces on each page that I actually decorate. So again, going round them with the vintage photo. And then I'll follow the exact same process to stick them in place. So sticking those together to begin with, getting that as a sort of little cluster. I'll then put the little cluster in place. Just going back to check that that hasn't stuck, it's, it's quite a good thing to do throughout the process because there is a possibility, especially if you lean on it, it could still stick until the, dr the glue has fully dried out. So a bit more of the, the heavier glue on the piece and just sticking that down in, into place. And as I say, I will do the rest off camera. And see that's I had to pull that a little bit because it was sticking there. So I've now got all my pages done and I'm just going to do a double check just to make certain that they're not sticking. I'll go through each one. And I've just left that in there because it, it is quite important just to, to do that. Then just going to take my vintage photo and just go around some of the edges. Now, one or two of the botanicals you'll see sticking up, I could cut them off. But all I'm going to do, I quite like to see them sticking up like that. Just adds that bit of interest. So I'm just going to darken down the background of them. I think I only had a couple like that, but as I say, I've just left them. Just adding the vintage photo here and there to the edges of the pages. So 
So I'm now looking again at this and whether or not I want to put it round. It would have been quite nice to have a quite a big bit on it, but I think if it was too big, for me it would have just kind of overpowered the front and the back. So I'm just going to cut out a small piece of this. Measure twice, cut once. And I just tear it apart because I like the the threads. So I'm just going to cut a narrow strip. And again, just pull it apart. Just double checking everything before I fully commit to it at this point. But I decide to go for it. So I'm just going to take again that slightly heavier glue, just run a, a length of it down each side and again I will smooth it out with my finger. Because still at this stage I'm looking for it not to go too far onto the tea bag, the main body of the tea bag, because there's still the chance that it could stick both the front and the back of the tea bag together. So putting that in, and then I'll just fold it over, and I'm just going to push it into place on both sides. And I've made sure it's gone under the butterfly's wing there. And just a little bit of glue under that edge of the wing. And I'll just push that into place. And that also helps hold that bit of fabric in place. So, set that aside to dry. And now I'm going to turn my attention to the six tea bags that were covered in the layer of glue. And these are going to become my tags. Now what I want to do is to get a bit colour on these. So I'm just going to do these in a similar way to, to the way that I did the tea bags before. Obviously I could have done these before, I could have dyed them before I glued them, but because it's distress ink, the glue would have moved, uh, sorry, the distress ink would have moved when I put the glue on top. So I did it this way around. So see me just dabbing it on a bit, wetting it, just trying to get some interest across all of them, not trying to get them to look the same. I want each one to look quite individual in that respect. And then once I've done them all, I will then dry them off. So, back to my little journal, back to these. Now, obviously, the tea bags that are that will become tags, I need to look at the size of them. Now, I could cut them one of two ways. I could have them that they're quite long and stick out the top, in which case I'd cut down those sides. Or I can run them the same way as my little journal and therefore just cut off 
the sides that have the crimped edges I think it was but just checking what size I want to make them I don't want them too thick because there's still the chance that the sides of the tea bag could actually split so once I've got my size I cut them all down and just going around them with my distress ink again I'm going to put a bit of stamping on them just to give them a bit of interest these could be embellished in, in any way, they could be embellished in a similar way to the journal but all I want to do is just use that same stamp that I'd used for my pages and I'm just going to put that down and on So now just looking at that piece of fabric, I could have used the pieces of the tea bag that I'd cut off to make tabs, but I'm going to use the, the piece of fabric. So again, I was just checking the sizes and I'm just going to cut this into six pieces. And I can just get six out of that and no more. And all I'm going to do is use my tiny attacher to put these on. Now I've put all the... What, what I want to do, I don't want to have them all sitting in the centre. So I want to use them a bit like you would on a file folder with, with the tabs. I want to spread them out just to spread the bulk of them. So that's why I'm taking each tag out individually and then looking at where I will locate the tab on it. And that tiny attacher is really quite ideal for a job as small. So I get them all done and here we go. We have the finished item. And I'll just take a moment to, to go through this. And you'll see I've left some of the pages blank. Those I would envisage journaling on. What I'd maybe do is to take a piece of paper such as the greaseproof paper or something like, you know, sandwich paper, deli paper and make something and perhaps write on that, then attach it in some way or sticking it down to the tea bag. Just always being mindful that any glue need to be very careful with. Left the double middle pages deliberately blank so that that could be used for journaling and of course the little tags can be used for journaling as well or something more could be added to them in future. I could even take paper such as that and perhaps add a little pocket. So in other words, I can use this in the way that I would any journal. And I think the little tags have turned out quite cute. I didn't think to round edges on them, but seeing it there now, hmm, perhaps I should have. I might go back and do that, but there again I might not. Here's another one, just showing you this. I did this one the opposite way, so rather than doing it kind of horizontally, I did it vertically. So with this one, I have the openings on this side, and I've only got a couple of tags in, the years in this one. With this one, I used a Tim Holtz paper dolls, the kind of smallest ones that come in the selection, and I think these have turned out quite nicely. Again, I've left the middle pages for journaling. I did the back of that one, uh, the spine of that one, just slightly different so it opens up a little bit more. But I think those pages have turned out quite nice. They have a bit of a vintage feel to it. And I like that. So, I hope you've enjoyed this project. Uh, if you have, then uh, you know I'd very much appreciate if you could give it the thumbs up, uh, hit that like button and if you're not a subscriber then I'd love for you to, to join me for more projects. And of course I'll leave a link to the Mixed Media Emporium on Facebook in the description box below and a link to Nina's video. So here are a few images just showing my finished project. So as always, please take care. Hope to see you again next time.
Thanks for watching. Bye for now.